Today I'm talking to Dr. Ed Garrett. Uh, Ed, can I ask you to introduce yourself? Oh, hi everyone. Um, so I'm Ed Garrett. I'm the Chief Executive of the Clinical Commissioning Groups in Suffolk and in North East Essex. And I'm also the Executive Lead for the uh, Local Integrated Care System. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. I've got uh, a few questions. Um, so that's a really good question, Andy. Um, I try and do a bit of exercise uh, before I start the day. Um, I try to uh, help out with the kids at home. I've got three kids at home and do some uh, homeschooling and keep them occupied, which I, I find really satisfying. Um, and uh, I try and uh, make sure there's separation between one day to the next. I think when COVID started, um, I found that one day was really blurring into another um, and I was working pretty relentlessly um, and that wasn't great because I was getting quite tired. So what I'm trying to do is um, have, build a bit more variety into my day, uh, book some annual leave, um, not have too much screen time in the evening and um, just take a bit more care of myself. Um, and I think that's important kind of thinking about my staff too. I absolutely love my staff. Um, and uh, what I've encouraged them all to do is to take annual leave too, um, to build in more social time together. So it's not we're not always talking about work. The built-in staff quizzes and uh, drop-in sessions for staff. And I think as a leader, it's important you come across in these situations as being calm and you, you are on on top of your brief and come across in a balanced way. I think. There's a risk that you get carried on so quickly uh, with all the work and the adrenaline. It, it can uh, it can be stressful for staff. So it's important that you kind of just take a step back and make sure that everyone's getting a bit of a breather and uh, that you kind of coming over as a calm leader. Thank you. Your your points about your own well-being, your families, and that of your team is uh, is really really critical. But it's, a, it's really amazing how much we've changed and delivered uh, so quickly in terms of service changes. So I think um, mental health has been a big strategy for us and priority for us in Suffolk. We've now got um, a 24-7 uh, crisis line, which is uh, brilliant to see. We've got some real excellent examples of integration now with primary care and mental health being developed. So I'm very uh, proud of that. We've got new ways of delivering uh, primary care. We've got visiting cars. Uh, we've seen uh, primary care and other sectors really embrace digital, uh, which is really, really important. And I think uh, the public have been positive about, about that too. Um, end of life, some brilliant leadership in the hospices in terms of end of life and in terms of the way they're now coordinating out of hospital end of life care. Uh, and I'm very proud of that as well. So. That, that those would be some examples, Andy, of, of some rapid changes that we've made um, at, largely out of hospital. That's fantastic to know because it's required that kind of local response uh, at so many different levels. Thank you. And I also know that how much you've involved the voluntary and community sector as well in all of this. So thank you for that too. Um, I'm proud of the, the values and the humanity people have shown. I mean, I think everyone wants to protect the people of Suffolk and wants them to be safe and wants to look after people's health. And I think everyone has come together with that common objective. People have changed their working patterns. They're working from home, having to balance their home life and their, and their work life. Some have been deployed into different roles. Um, some people's roles have, have changed, but everyone's just got on with it. They've been flexible and adaptable um, and uh, very focused on people and place. And I think that's uh, great. And also people have been creative and innovative and we've been able to support that and, and take some risks and just and get, get some things done. And I think some of the voluntary sector culture that we've got in Suffolk, uh, where they are very innovative, I think we've brought that into the health service too now much more. Um, and I think that's been a big, big step forward culturally. You're, uh, that's the way I see it too, and thank you. And I, I like the fact that you don't 
feel that you, you, you don't expre express as being the organisations, NHS that is, locally as being the one only ones with the ideas. You've, you've gone out there and, and looked for others to, to help and pitch in, which is fantastic. Well, I mean, the, there's so much that, that we're learning, I, I would imagine. Um, at the current moment, we're doing a lot less activity in the acute sector and we're providing a lot more care in the community and around people's homes. And that was always the ob objective, but we've now got an opportunity to lock in that new way of working for the future. So I'd be really determined that we encourage that community thinking, the voluntary sector, all partners, the volunteers, about how we support people in their communities and be less orientated towards the acute end of both uh, mental and physical health care, I, I would I would say. Um, I, I think we've uh, learned a lot about the care sector um, in the NHS, and I think the relationship between health and social care will be improved for the better uh, going forward, and I'm very, uh, very excited about that. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, digital has been uh, revolutionary, really, for us. Um, we've moved forward so well with the digital agenda, um, and I think there's a lot of learning in that that we'd want to continue. And then finally, I think um, workforce has been workforce has been deployed in different ways. We've mobilised quickly. It's been less about organisations and boundaries. It's more about teamwork around uh, the protection of the population. And I think if we can keep that learning going, um, we'll, we'll be onto a very good thing. So. Um, it's hugely exciting, I would say. We've learned a lot in six weeks and we need to keep hold of those lessons. Thank you. Thank you again, Ed. Thank you for uh, everything that you've contributed uh, to this interview and for your reflections on uh, what's been happening and what's lying ahead for us all. My pleasure, Andy. Thank you. Thank you.